terms. Right now, we really just want good links to NCI and places like that, right? Uh, that, that, that allow us to actually gather more. Um, alerts and reminders are interesting. You know, I got an appointment, you get that call. That's one thing, but why shouldn't your personal health record remind you that you're due for you know, whatever test you're due for? That it's time to refill your prescription, it's time for this. Now, again, it can't be annoying, but these are the kinds of things that ultimately we will expect to see in your personal health record. So that it's actually kind of a, uh, it's not just something you only do after you go see your physician. It's something that's kind of a, a constant thing. It might be hooked in with even if it's a your calendar. Um, how do you manage your finances? It's a whole separate area there, but of course that needs to be part of, uh, of the functionality space. Where I go, can I met my deductible on uh, all of the, those sorts of things. Um, uh, and managing the PHR itself, you know, the sort of meta things about my security, my preference settings, and all that are also functionalities that need to be built uh, into these systems, and then we'll have interface uh, and usability issues. Um, it's more dense as we go along. Uh, the data space is this third dimension, the kinds of data that we would like to have in these uh, personal health records. And here, um, uh, again, laundry list of, of, of things, uh, the personal information. Uh, I, I didn't think of pets, but somebody uh, sort of pointed that out the other day, so I added it here. But some people actually you know, want to have their, you know, their veterinary uh, information uh, in, in their personal health record. Uh, you know, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, it, it could be there. But lots of interesting little issues here about contact information. You know, how, much, how detailed is this contact information? And if somebody steals your identity, you know, this is something you just don't want to just sort of throw out there on the web necessarily. Uh, certainly complaints are the, sort of the reason you went to the physician uh, or you had that appointment. Uh, your diagnostic procedures, lab results, uh, including all the multimedia stuff that we'd like to sort of have in the personal health records at some, some day. Um, you know, immunizations, allergies, medications, uh, advanced directives. Uh, did you put those in your PHRs? And are they legal? <coughs> right, so if you put in there, and this is your personal thing that you say, you know, I, I want a, a DNR attached if I'm in this sort of a, a situation. You know, is that is that going to be legal enough? You know, or, or, uh, for uh, for your wishes to be, um, um, and, and who would know? No one else has access to the PHR. Um, the thing that I think is important, especially uh, with, uh, with younger people, are these things like nutrition and diet and exercise. Um, you know, may, maybe you should actually put in a, a, a photograph uh, of different parts of your body periodically. You know? It's not just, you know, I can tell what my face looked like you know, when I was 20, because um, there were some photos around. I, I don't know what my knee looked like or um, you know, that ankle that's been bothering me. Uh, and, um, so uh, it, it, there may be some other sorts of things that might actually encourage us uh, to uh, encourage younger people to participate in, in, in some of these things. Personal commentaries. Um, <coughs> it seems just reasonable that people should be able to actually sort of make diary entries. And so a lot of us keep diaries for various reasons, professionally perhaps, but why not health diaries? That was terrible today. I don't know why. You know, it's just like awful. Man, I just felt great. It was that peak experience day, and I just don't know why. It's nice to see some of those things over time, uh, and, and uh, I think it would also, again, encourage people to actually participate in these and make them part of their, their lives rather than just those, those very special kinds of things uh, where they're sort of out of sight, out of, out of, out of mind. Um, and, of course, then lots of information resources uh, that need to be out there with you know pronunciations and glossaries and things that are going to help you support groups and, and so on. Now, um, uh, the one of the things that I, I, I learned from my students I, I, uh, at a, a seminar last semester uh, where uh, three students uh, took on the, the project of sort of just mocking up a personal health record and they decided to focus it on pregnancy and, and this is actually kind of nice because you know it's sort of a, a well-defined event a happy kind of health event and so uh, they had a lot of fun and uh, they decided they would like to use time as the main organizing dimension here, and they did uh, three different uh, mock-ups, uh, a couple of calendar motifs and, and a timeline motif. Uh, they, uh, they did a bit of kind of literature searching in Australia. They're really good at this, actually. They some really nice tools for, it, for um, uh, people uh, to um, uh, sort of monitor their pregnancy, you know, the family to sort of keep track of things as they go on their paper base. But, you know, they're, they're actually nice, nice uh, things there. So they, they identified five facets, events, 
the, like appointments, the you know, financial stuff, health, the health data, the readings, the reports, and so on, and uh, your, your own personal journal and, and reflections, and then resources or uh, things out. So here's a, here's a couple of the mock-ups they did. These are not implementations, but just to give you a sense about some of this complexity. So this is only pregnancy, right? This isn't your whole medical history. And look how complicated this is. So this is sort of the flat calendar design. So make it look like a calendar. And um, the uh, five facets are, are here at, uh, in, in each of the days. Uh, and then uh, the uh, resources are, are just handled separately here. And then as you click on things, you get over on the side the particular aspect of things going on, in this case, health data. <coughs> Lots of other examples that you but in your interest of time. I just want to fly through these just so you can get a sense of you know, another way of thinking about usability is to do some of this, and that really then forces you to say, well, what are the real sort of issues that we need to fix? You know, here's one that's um, the vertical flat timeline. You know, pretty simple, but just the uh, same sort of idea as the last <coughs> one, really sort of calendar uh, layout. It's a uh, linear design. Uh, here's a more uh, advanced uh, sort of way to think about this. These are layered timelines, so then you actually get those little tabs to kind of be able to zoom in and out uh, in a kind of discrete way uh, of, of different time periods. And uh, here's the more complex one that actually gives you a multi-layer timeline. So that you get a timeline that's broken out in the top there with the different five facets highlighted. And then you can actually get the detailed uh, data for any uh, specific um, a date or period, trimester, whatever of the, the current setting happens to be. Now, you know, the exercise here was really to, um, you know, try and identify what are some of the design uh, issues. And so they were interested in the design trade-offs. What I was interested in is, okay, now how would people actually use this? And so this is like a nice interplay between the, let's design something cool for, for a class project, and what can we learn from the, the actual process of doing that design, I think worked together quite nicely. And, and so I learned a, a, a lot about some of those, those, those guidelines or those uh, dimensions that uh, we just went through based upon interacting with uh, the students. So um, here's the way we're sort of thinking about this. Uh, right now, uh, we're really, really fortunate uh, at UNC to, to be in a place that actually really values, values and practices interdisciplinary collaboration. I think five or and, and more than any other university of those uh, roadmap grant, grants went to uh, UNC. Uh, the School of Public Health is fantastic, and they collaborate really well with the med school. They always have. Uh, med school is uh, 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 also uh, very, very much uh, into outreach, uh, either working with, with Duke or, or um, uh, uh, public health. Uh, my school, the Information and Library Science School, works with chemistry department, computer science, sociology, lots of other departments, journalism and mass communication. We have a mapping over there as well. So we have this team. Uh, that uh, actually has been meeting pretty regularly on this, and it's actually been really interesting because I learned all this new stuff that I didn't think of it that way from a mass communication point of view that you know, my colleague in journalism talks about. And I certainly don't know what the position is who says, well, that's not the way patients actually ask that question at all, and that's not really what they have to be about. And, and so it's, it's been quite nice. We also have a couple of usability labs that we can leverage. And so uh, this is sort of um, uh, the, uh, the fun part for me. The, 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 the way I'm thinking about taking those three dimensions and, and crossing them uh, sort of works like this. Um, we've got these usability challenges. We've got these kinds of functions that we'd like to have in the PHRs. We've got these kind of data types. So you can think of this as this big matrix. So if that's the way to sort of begin to organize our thinking, then if we wanted to develop some um, usability uh, framework uh, or guidelines, um, we, what we might do is take that matrix and begin to populate those cells with various things. So you could put uh, specific PHRs that are out there on the market. Well, there isn't enough yet to actually populate the whole thing, but there'll be some that will have actually some pretty good coverage. Uh, we can relate to MHRs or other kinds of systems. <coughs> more interestingly, we can actually, and what we're trying to do is relate to the literature. And so can we find user studies that say, if for this cell, for this sort of <coughs> a layer through that matrix, here's the right kinds of evidence we have to make design decisions. And so what we're trying to do is actually conduct a, a set of four studies that will at least populate some of those, uh, those dimensions uh, in the coming months. Um, we might 
look at specific vectors within health behavior. So the answer would be one, because it's sort of uh, ongoing and people tend to get real interested in their information uh, if they know that uh, they've been diagnosed with cancer uh, or they have, they have cancer in, uh, in their uh, predisposition. And so uh, that might be a very good one to actually look at as kind of a, a strata. Um, and you know, ultimately, what we'd like to do is, is if we come up with, with these guidelines, and you know, they're not going to be fully populated uh, by a long shot, but to have people in the design community think about uh, the PHR usability uh, from this point of view, then you know, they'll hopefully do a better job, and we'll be able to integrate <coughs> the systems so that people will actually adopt them. Because you, know, you can make a great system, but if no one buys it or adopts it, then you know, you've, you've done an academic exercise. Um, now, to sort of conclude here, um, here's the, sort of the big vision. Usable, things that people can actually understand, use, find useful, will be adopted. And what this will lead to, we hope, and we expect, is patient involvement, healthier lives, and maximization of our health resources so that uh, you know, we can make better use of our, of our human uh, and, uh, resources. And, and so you know, what could be a better sort of vision than that for personal health records? Uh, and uh, so the usability, I think, is really key to this. And it's with that uh, that uh, I'll uh, conclude and One thing I didn't see you mention, and um, I didn't catch the entire presentation, so I apologize if I missed it, is the idea of backup. I, I have this personal theory that nuclear war is obsolete because somebody just has to pull the big plug in the sky and the entire country falls to its knees. So if you put years and years and decades of very vital and in some ways irreplaceable health information on a data plane, what do you do for Plan B? Yeah, that's that, that's the preservation of um, that, um, that that really is important. I, I, I think you're right. There, it's, it's often over, overlooked. I haven't seen it in any of the existing systems. I haven't seen it discussed in the literature. I'm particularly sensitive to it because the school I teach in teaches ar archival um, studies, and so uh, we uh, we actually uh, have people who are archivists, and so they force us to think about these things. And, and, and so if you're, if you're, if you're absolutely right. Uh, we have to make plans for preserving this stuff, and that's just preserving it, but migrating it to different formats. Right. Because um, you know, the idea of the PayPal is to say that when they do patient involvement, I don't want to be able to say, um, what's the reaction from that that the Question and, and I wish I had a um, a, a general answer. Um, I'll give you two two uh, uh, responses. One is my my own my current healthcare provider um, uh, actually answers email and sends me email. So um, you know we've had a lot of uh, back and forth and I bring him things and he seems to value. It. Now whether that, right that's a that's a that's a pretty small small proportion. Uh, um, I I think that. There's, there may be some pushback on this, but you know, how can people complain about informed consumers? Uh, you know, unless you're really just a, a you know, you know, yes, yeah, you know, it's, 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 yeah, the hypochondria is right. Uh, but you know, it, it's a time issue, right? So if you have to now sort of get involved in that, uh, oh yeah, I understand this and, and look over this, it, it, it takes some of your time. But I mean, in the long run, this has got to be positive, and I don't think that the health care professions uh, are going to be able to resist this bottom line.
their debt in one day. Not, not that I've seen, but that, that, that doesn't mean it hasn't been done. On these like 175, many of them come from um, uh, insurance companies. And so I would assume that they are actually are being driven by not just the, the, the needs in the insurance companies, but the uh, sort of record uh, to sort of save money and so on, but also they, they must have uh, consulting positions. Um, on our team, there are two or three MDs who come to our meetings, and they, they, they seem really interested in this. They tend to be younger people, so I don't know if this is sort of, you know, again, a kind of a skewed sample. Sir? One more question. Yeah, I appreciate very much the, um, the uh, the logic of the, just the tactical and practical psychology that you use and sort of you relate it to your own experience and others as you're designing this. I would like to respond to the, I'm a physician of 30 years, of what what the pushback is on the other side. Uh, I value informed patients. Uh, when they come with their reams of printouts, it means a lot to me. It doesn't mean a lot to the profession. So some of the things that you might want to be looking for are um, models of health care or health promotion that are so limited in scope, say treatment-based as compared to prevention-based or health promotion-based, that they're not capable of fielding the question. That makes people very uncomfortable. Or that um, people are asking questions about health promotion and prevention that are bigger than we can afford to do, particularly as we have tens of millions of baby boomers coming to crash into a Medicare system saying, Where's my health care my way? Which brings the final huge uh, obstacle psychologically that the system is not looking at it, my health care my way. The health the system is looking at it to use an equal system to yours to jam your concerns into a bin somewhere, okay? And so I just wanted, I hope that sounds logical. There's a huge pushback on the other side. It's, it's it, and, uh, the quote, I'll end here, that came to me was one by Robert Bella that he gave to Bill Moyers in um, a, a series he did called The World of Ideas. And the quote was, the awareness of interdependency in the absence of moral meaning is terrifying. And that's what I think you're facing.